Hi guys and welcome back to another Wardle Road video. Now we're not at Colne Valley today, we're a little bit further east in Deerham, uh, that's in Norfolk for those of you who don't know. And that's because today we've come to speak to the guys who are behind the channel, the DMU Restorers. Now I'll leave a link to their channel in the description below, but they have recently done work for me making up the two ducats and more, even more recently, Johnny, who is a welder, has worked on the end panel for the brake van. So we've got that ready to go back into, uh, back on the brake van. But in today's video, we're gonna be talking to these guys about the project that they've undertaken, their three car DMU. We're gonna have a look at what progress they've made so far and just find out a little bit more about it. But of course, if you wanna find out more about their project, as I said, I will leave a link to their channel in the description below. But as always guys, if you do enjoy the content here, please do hit the thumbs up and any feedback is always welcome in the comment section below. But other than that, let's go find out what these guys are up to. Okie okay, dokie, okay. so I'm Michael, I'm part of the Class 117 group, one of the co-owners along with my father. With This is DMS 51412, one of our three vehicles. The first in the restoration queue and currently in the shed at Deerham. So originally, um, my father and myself were looking to get into the uh, rolling stock ownership game again after uh, previously having owned some Mark II carriages which were also based here years ago. Um, we decided that we would like to own a DMU, so we, went, we set about looking for various vehicles really and the first one to come up was our DMBS 51370, which we haven't yet started a full restoration on. Uh, so that was the first vehicle we acquired, that was from Gloucestershire and Warwickshire Railway in 2018, beginning of 2018. And then around May time in 2018, we also got offered this which is DMS 51412, which is the original partner for 51370, part of set L432, which is the banner we run under. And then recently uh, in, crikey, October of last year, um, we got our centre car delivered here, which is TCL 59520. That came from the Dartmoor Railway um, up in Devon. Or Devon or Court, round Cornwall way. Uh, I don't want to get offend anyone. Um, so that's also now made our set up to three cars. But that was originally the celebrity vehicle out of set B430, the chocolate and cream one. Um, as for the stage we're at with the restoration, we've just completed the new steel work uh, on the driver's side of 51412. So we're about halfway through near enough this vehicle. It's taken just over a year to get to that point. So we're now at the point where we're painting the back end of the vehicle in its final blue color. Um, but I can now hand on heart say that it is solid all that way down and shouldn't leak once the gutter is back on, um, he says confidently. And then we're gonna move around to the other side and rinse and repeat really before then removing the corridor, making sure the steel works good there and reinstating the corridor with a new covering. Um, before we then look to move on to the next vehicle. The most challenging part of the uh, exterior has probably been, it's a tough one between the cab and replacing the front panel. So doing the cab, we had to cut out uh, probably about six inches off the bottom. It's had a whole new bottom, new framework, new top around uh, the tops of the windows. Getting the dome off was, was pretty challenging. We had to have a lot of us up scaffolds and sort of handing it down but that was the main issue of the leak area. And then moving around to the first panel on the side, that was all completely rotten. So we had to rip that off. And it was kind of, how are we gonna go about this? How are we gonna get the window back in? Cause we put it back in and cutting the window out at the right level was its own sort of nightmare, but we got round it and the windows installed. So it, I'd say it's, it's gone successfully to be honest, but they're probably the most challenging pieces. For the whole project, we've sort of said about 12 years. Uh, so we've got about 11 years left, which is, we've given ourselves a bit of generosity in there, um, simply because there was three of us now, but now we've got young Scott, he's uh, joined us and he's cracking on as well. So for this vehicle, we're looking at probably another year uh, to get this finished and done body work wise. Then the plan is put that outside, um, 
my father and Scott can crack on doing the interior and then hopefully get the next one in here and then start doing the bodywork on that. Then we've got both power cars done at some point, all painted, and then that makes it easier to get the two cars set up and running before then moving on to the centre car, which needs considerably less work on both power cars to get that running and then in integrated into the set. Uh, the first thing on this side, when we'd uh, completed the cab rebuild, we moved on to this side. The first thing we did was take the gutter off along the entirety of the vehicle, which was uh, they're 20 metres long, 64 foot, so it's quite a substantial task, cutting away a lot of bolts. Um, after that, that really shows the true extent of, of quite the, the hidden nasty suburbanitis that these do get. So once that, that mastic fails, like I've said in, in previous videos, that it really does get in there and just ruin things. So what we had to do, there's very little of the cant rail left. We then peeled all the skin off of here and just then start cutting away at the framework, renewing the framework, rust, uh, rust converting the framework, what was left and, and in good shape, and then just slowly building it back up piece by piece from there to the, the new panel and the window installed as you see it today. So painting, um, I've had a lot of advice off of other rolling stock owners. Um, the, the East Lanks and, and Kev Dowd have been particularly very helpful. Chris Moxon at the North Norfolk as well. He's been an absolute godsend on explaining how to paint and not to mention our star painter here, Tony. Um, so thanks to all of them for the tips and, and hints. It's not the final finish, but it's certainly a learning process. So we started off with the pea green on the bare steel work and then worked our way up through the process of flattening it off, gray undercoat and then blue gloss to here we are now. And then it just needs flattening off again because there's still a few brush marks in it. But this is just to identify any other little dimples that will need sanding and filling just to really try and refine it. It's not going to be perfect, it's 60 years old, um, but it's just trying to get it as nice as we can possibly be. And yeah. Okay, so um, at this end, obviously it's still green, like I say, it's got to be built up to blue. So it will be green on the bare steel, which has all been taken back to bare with purple discs. Um, so we can make sure there's absolutely no hidden nasties across the bodywork on throughout the vehicle. Then get a grey uh, gray undercoat, two coats of that, and then another coat of gloss just to seal it. The reason we didn't get the whole way of the vehicle is because winter was fast approaching and we needed to seal up what we'd already painted green um, with the gloss just to stop the, any damp or anything ruining what our, our good hard work. Uh, and this section still required work. So what we've done is we've now finished that and it's just the paint process now. So this is literally, as you'll see, completed steel work. Um, and that's how we get to the nice shiny colours that everyone likes. So with the doors, thankfully they're aluminium because we have lots of them. It would have been uh, quite an atrocity if they were steel skin because we've had even more work. So that's one saving grace about these vehicles. So they've been stripped back completely bare and then they've had a coat of etch primer, um, which is relevant to aluminiums and galvanised roofs. The, the roof has had a uh, coat of etch primer after a tea wash. Um, and then this has had the Williamson's pea green anti-corrosive primer. Um, after that, we'll then be installing windows into the window frames, which have also been restored. So I've had to learn to become a glazier as well, which is all fun and games. But yeah, it's a bit of a process. As for this side, it's had two, sorry, three, three uh, panel replacements, two complete panels themselves and this one here is a half panel so the bottom was was a, a bit too far gone for our liking so we chopped it off above just above the bottom of the window and then renewed it there um, so probably at least 95% of it there's patches gone in where needed but it's mainly just the framework that's there's been a lot of the problems as well a lot of the roof steel is new uh, at least why the gutter hides it just to make sure that we don't get the same problem in the future so on the interior, as we've gone along, we've wire wheeled and cleaned everything back on the interior panels. So they've all been primed, painted. Um, so they're all sealed up as well now. So our next task, like I say, once this is the, the body work has been restored, we'll then be putting this vehicle outside, getting any flooring renewed, getting all the insulation back in it, new paneling, and then ready for a new lino. And then the new wooden window frames we've had made installed.
So I'm Johnny and I am one of the longest members of the 117 Preservation Group here. I started off with them when I just turned 15. I found them at their first location, which uh, we're thankful we're not there anymore. Um, and there'll be a shot of me on my first working day, completely, uh, completely a novice. But um, at the time I knew more about welding than Michael did because it was kind of my hobby. So getting on to basically the DMU, it's the reason that we need to take it all apart is because filler that is in this and the amount of filler that's in this, um, when we come to strip this, which is what the uh, PD means, it means purple disc, it's basically it's an abrasive disc that we use that strips off all the paint, gets us straight back to metal work, but doesn't take any of the metal off um, and doesn't leave any marring either. So the reason that we need to basically take it back is because this metal is, some of it is from BR days, some of it hasn't been replaced in its whole life and the old fillers, they react badly with the paint and they also, they hold water, which therefore means the rust gets worse. And uh, once we strip this back, you'll see all these bits of filler here. They have got a hole underneath them pretty much because I remember when we first <laughs> tried to do this, thinking that we knew what we were doing and oh boy, we didn't. Um, so it's really important. So we're gonna, initially we're gonna cut this panel here because we know this is utterly shot. Uh, this section might be saveable, it might not be. Um, but as well as that, it's important to remove everything here because we need to get to the framework because the framework's shot. Um, we did do a repair above this when we thought we could restore a DMU. Yet again, it was another huge learning curve. And uh, we're actually planning on taking that repair out because we now know so much more. We've got the proper stuff. We actually know what we're doing. Um, but I would say that's also one of the hardest parts about this is getting started. You need someone with experience to teach you. We didn't have that. so. That is the experience and we taught ourselves, um, which is probably the, the best part about this. It just takes a long time, but we always learn something and uh, which means we can be really efficient going through this side. We can rip a panel out now in three days. We can get the frame replaced in about another day and we can get a whole new panel in in three days. So, you know, it takes us a week to do three meters of the DMU. So if we get enough time, it's all, it, all this is about is time. The more time we can get, the better. Um, and then we can have this looking shiny and no filler, no reacting with the old paints. We get a nice paint job, we get a smooth finish and that ultimately will bring out the punters and uh, yeah, get people riding on our DMU. As a welder, the most challenging part of this unit has been the sheer volume of work. It's, I think we've replaced about 10 meters of the structural framework at the top. It just, it basically just crumbles out. There's nothing left of it. I remember on the cab on this side, uh, we went to strip it out, I just put my hand on it and, and then the whole cab went like that and jammed the door shut. Um, so probably the hardest part about being a welder on this was sheerly the inexperience. Because we would go to rip something out and it's like, oh, well, we should have welded something lower down on the framework to hold it in place while we chop it all out, replace it, and then we don't get the problem of having to get like a hydraulic jack and some metal to pull it all apart to then weld it. Um, and apart from that, just the sheer volume of work, the awkward positions I have, <laughs> I've had things burn my neck, go down my trousers in places I really don't <laughs> want, but, and you can't move, you just gotta let it hurt. Um, so that'd probably be the worst part about this is just some of the awkward positions you've got to get into to get everything joined together as you need. So as far as the favorite part of the restoration goes, I would say the fact that it isn't mine uh, because if I make a mistake, well, you know, it's, I haven't got anything materially invested in it. I just come down here for fun. So it's something that I can learn on. Obviously, I'm not destroying their unit. But it's something I can learn on and not have to worry about the repercussions. So the favorite part is just coming down here, ripping its pieces and going, ah, you know what? Like, if we need to replace more, I don't have to buy it. I don't have to get it in. I just get to enjoy putting it back together. So um, definitely for me, just being basically a, a third wheel, just being dragged along and just doing all their work for them, um, most of the structural work at least. Michael's better on the, uh, on the final finishing and joining sheet metal together. Um, but yeah, literally just jumping in and just <laughs> working our way out of a hole. It's just, it's the exciting part of solving a problem that you've got no idea how to solve. So as for the mechanicals, that's still uh, quite, I wouldn't say an unknown, but still a, a massive learning curve that we are yet to tackle. We'll do the top side first and then we'll be moving on to the mechanicals afterwards. 
Um, as for this one, both engines run and they run nicely. Um, it came to us in, in very good mechanical condition, although it does need a, a bogey swap on the rear simply because there's a, a cog on the final drive with a chip tooth which can't be replaced. So thankfully we have a spare set of bogies which we'll be putting under this, which uh, are in very good condition, but they'll be getting overhauled before they come under it. Um, as for this, it just needs a, a very thorough maintenance exam, new filters, oils, etc. But if we wanted to now, we could stick a set of batteries on it, start it up, and she'd run and drive quite happily. As for uh, the nut and bolt side of things, I, I'm pretty confident with that because that, that's uh, my day-to-day -day job as a fitter on, on the big railway. I'm, I'm quite confident with the running gear and things. It's just learning engines and electrical systems is something I'm still yet to do but I am willing to learn and it, as it's interesting, it, it's something that you know I can pick up quite easily. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting stuck in with a couple of seasoned fitters that we have lined up um, that used to work on these when they were in service down at Tisley. So I'm looking forward to getting stuck in really and getting things like tappet clearances sorted and putting oils in and changing gearboxes, whatever needs doing really. Right, so, uh, Work that's been carried out in here so far, as you may be able to see, there's a few shiny panels dotted about, especially on this side. Um, when we were doing, going throughout the vehicle bit by bit, and all the metal had been renewed in the, in the relevant places, we went through with a wire wheel and a, a chipping gun, chipped off all the flaky paint, wire brushed it all back to bare, and then rust converter everywhere just to make sure any rust is eliminated and then went over it with anti-corrosive primer and then a top coat of a bitumen black, so like a bitumen sort of thick, high, heavy duty gloss black, um, just to seal it all in. And then the window frames have all been cleaned back to bare, etched primed and then white painted on just to help reflect the light through the windows. And then the windows, as you may be able to see, they may be out of shot, um, have started to be refitted. So we'll be going along and refitting the windows gradually in this saloon. So the steel work in this panel, as you can see, it's a, a bit of a patchwork in places. This is what we uh, call the devil panel, as uh, the front panel was replaced, but this one was just about saveable. So it's had three, three patches, I believe. Um, so it was just about saveable, but in the future, knowing what we know now, we wouldn't spend as much time on a panel like this. We'd just chop it out and replace it because you're getting a whole new panel then, which is nice and thick all the way around rather than something you have to patch and then spend time putting filler on. Uh, so it just takes more time to do and it's quicker and more efficient in the long run to just replace a panel. So that's what's gone on with this panel, but it's had new framework as well where required, like this top Z section here. As for the seats in here, as you can see, they're, they're just stacked up out the way for now while we're working in here. They'll get moved over to this side once we start on that side. But once, uh, once we complete the steel work all the way round, the vehicle's then going to have the seat sent away for recovering, new mock it. The seat frames will be sent away for shot blasting and powder coating. There'll be a new lino put on the floor. There'll also be new ceiling going in. And before any of the external panelling and ceiling goes in, new insulation everywhere to keep everything nice and toasty in the, in the winter months.